Let me show you how to create Figma prototype, which is the fastest way to turn your designs into something that people can click, scroll and interact with. By the end of this video, you will learn all the core interactions that goes into every prototype, no matter how complex or simple it is. Welcome to the part 1 of the Prototype Like a Pro series when I'm gonna teach you everything about prototyping. We're gonna start with the fundamentals in the next couple of videos we're gonna go through smart animate, variables and even advanced logic prototyping. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the part. Let's open a new Figma file and select our frame. I'll be using iPhone 13 mini which is the 375 812. Next, we're gonna do a very simple wireframe that's gonna imitate a mobile shop. I'm gonna start by selecting a rectangle and draw a header. Inside that, I'm gonna add two circles, change them color to white. By holding Option on my keyboard, I'm gonna duplicate that. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna do another rectangle to imitate mobile navigation. I'm gonna change the color to be slightly darker. And inside, we're gonna place for rectangles to imitate icons. We're gonna do product cards, so again we're gonna hit the rectangle in the middle. Now we have our dummy wireframe, we're gonna select that frame, rename it to 01. In the prototype tab, we're gonna open show prototype settings, select device we wanna be using iPhone X as this is the exact same size as my wireframe. And finally, let's click play. And there we have our prototype. We can share this as a link. So all we're gonna do is share prototype, copy link and send it to someone, as well as we can preview on our actual device using Figma app. So let's go back to our design and now we're gonna make it a bit more interactive. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make it more scrollable. So I'm gonna select our main frame and then I'm gonna extend the size of it. We're gonna add a bit more cards, so I'm gonna select those and duplicate them to the bottom. Now on our prototype we can see there is something going on, but our nav and header also are scrollable, but they should stay in one place. To fix that, let's go back to our design mode and let's start with the navigation. By using shift on my keyboard, I'm gonna select all those rectangles and we're gonna close them as a frame selection. Let's call it nav. I'm gonna repeat the same process in the header, so holding shift, selecting all the elements, frame selection, and this one is gonna be header. Now for the header, we're gonna go into prototype tab, and under the scroll behavior section, we go into position, scroll with parent, we're gonna change that into fixed stay in place. Navigation, we're gonna do the same. The last thing for navigation, because we want always to align to the bottom, we're gonna set constraint to always align to the bottom and the center. So let's align it to the bottom so it's gonna be out of our view, but on prototype it always stays in the same place. Lastly, let's change our frame size to be same as original, which was 812, so I'm gonna resize that. And when we now go into our prototype, we cannot scroll. But when we gonna select our frame and change overflow to vertical, we can see all the content on the page is scrolling but our top and bottom always stays in the same place. That was quite easy for the horizontal scroll. Now let's do vertical scroll. Let's do a selection of rectangles that goes to this side. I'm gonna select them all and close them in a frame selection. Let's call them tabs and maybe let's change their color to red to be even more visible. Next, I'm gonna move two tabs into our main frame. So as you can see, there are some elements hiding. What we're gonna do is we're gonna clip that frame to the moment where we want the scroll to end, let's say here. Go to prototype mode and on overflow, we're gonna select horizontal. So now where we're gonna scroll horizontally, we're gonna clip to that moment where we want our frame to clip. So if we said we're clipping in the middle, the scroll will finish in the middle. Perfect. Now, no mobile app have only one page. So let's duplicate that and adjust the content inside to create a brand new page. I'm gonna delete those. Now I'm gonna place one big rectangle in the middle and a few other rectangles to imitate text. Let's connect those two pages. Let's go into prototype tab and let's say user gonna click that rectangle and it's gonna open that page. So we're gonna select the element that we want the interaction to start with could be navigation, could be that rectangle, could be whole page. And we're gonna connect it to the place we want to navigate to. 
Let's go back to our prototype. So now I'm gonna click that rectangle and it's gonna open new page. We can now set if user click that rectangle, it goes back to previous page. Or we can also select that if user click that rectangle, it go always back to the previous page, doesn't matter how many pages they were. Did you guys also notice, once we have our flow, Figma is adding this light blue label. This is the start of the flow. So as the first screen we're gonna see in our interactive prototype. We can change that, so we, all we have to do is select our frame, go in the right side panel, and where is flow starting point, we're gonna click minus. So now flow starting point could be that screen select plus we can as well rename it and we can also add description now when we're gonna play our prototype is gonna start with the second screen and we're gonna have name of our flow as well as description on the left side panel we can set different options for transition between pages all we have to do is go back to the prototype tab and then select our noodle under animation we can set what we want if you want instant animation or dissolve smart animate i will go into that function later on as well as more simple as moving, pushing and sliding. Now the interaction is on slide. The other way to create interaction is to select the element we want to create the interaction. And then in the right side panel we can click plus and then we're gonna click actions and we have more options. Speaking of which, let's do the overlay. For overlay, let's go back to our design tab and do a rectangle which is slightly smaller than our frame let's say 300 on 300. i'm gonna change it into white and then do a few rectangles inside as well as the circle as a close button let's select all together and frame selection i'm gonna call it model let's go back to our prototype tab and select maybe the last rectangle from our nav we're gonna add interaction on click to open overlay our overlay is called model and now we can change the position to be either centered top on bottom or manual i'm gonna select manual let's say somewhere here we have other settings like you can close when clicking outside or adding background as well as changing the animation let's go with the basic one and then we're gonna adjust so we're gonna hit that rectangle and it's gonna open overlay right now there is no option to close it let's add background and fix the close button to edit I'm gonna click on that noodle and I'm gonna add a background and to close we have a few options but my favorite one is to make the X button the closing button so I'm gonna select that circle and on interaction action we're gonna close overlay so now when we test we have a nice background and we have our close button the other option would be to select close when clicking anywhere outside if you have a professional version of Figma, you can also insert video into your prototype. So let's duplicate this one more time and replace this with the video. I have my video selected, so I'm just gonna paste it here. Now, when I select that video and go into prototype setting, we have this option to autoplay video on the prototype or to unselect that. To make it slightly more interactive and practice our skill, let's duplicate this one more time and this frame we're gonna have the autoplay on this we're gonna unselect that we can add a triangle to imitate the play button maybe let's change to white color so we want to add interaction from the triangle into the next screen when the video is playing then we want video to stop playing and go back to the pose mode so we're gonna connect that to the previous state and we have new option here now so we can go back to previous state when the video ends when the video hits or when we click on it i'm gonna go and select on click lastly let's connect our main prototype into this screen so let's say from this rectangle so when we click that rectangle we should have our new screen press space play in play stop video stop previously we select our animation to be slide in and figma just copy that setting so we have to unselect that to be instant on that video part let's try it again hit that and now it's more smooth to restart prototype you're gonna hit r on your keyboard to practice everything what we did in this video, I'm gonna leave you a link in the description to Figma file and you can practice the exact same stuff on more realistic example. And there you have it, all the core interactions you need to create a prototype in Figma. Now, as a homework, pick your favorite app, recreate three to five screens and create a prototype. Share the link in the comments so I can check it out and others too. And as always, if you have any questions, drop them down below like subscribe and see you next time bye